with us together today, join with us together in this uh, auditorium, which would like to welcome each and every one of you. Today, we are really beginning a journey of studying greater clarity. We always want things to be more and more clear, don't we? We sometimes think we've grasped something, but how wonderful it is when suddenly it becomes even more understood or a greater clarity brought to a subject or a topic. And we begin to say, ah, the light is going on and it's even shining brighter, the light of understanding, the light of awareness of, of spiritual truth. Well, today we're talking about right seeing, right seeing. In our world today, there's a lot of people who believe that we're called to be world changers. Let's change the world. Let's let that be our mission. But in the journey of metaphysics and metaphysics being beyond the physical, in the world of the spiritual, in this realm, we are not called to sort of go around making everybody who look, making them right, and so we say, or trying to set them right. Uh, we are living in a world that uh, sometimes we are so caught up with, I need to show you what's wrong with you, and I need to tell you what's right from my perspective. I lived for years in Africa, and there were so many Western missionaries of different faith traditions coming in, always trying to tell the indigenous people that this is where you're wrong, and this is where we're right. We came here to set you right not even just religiously or spiritually, but about everything. Oh, your ways are all wrong and our ways are all right. But you see, in the realm of metaphysics, our spiritual journey, we're not here to set others right, but to see them rightly. Not to set people right, but to see them rightly. Right seeing is seeing life from a totally different perspective from a particular perspective and that really changes our whole attitude and how we interact with one another when we see someone with right seeing. There's this beautiful phrase, there is one life, that life is God, and that life is my life now. I love that. There is one life and that life is God. That's right, what we're living is this divine expression this, we're living out this life that is the universal love. We're living out this life that is infinite wisdom and possibilities for us. And that life is my life tomorrow, yesterday. Oh no, it's right now. That's my life right now in this very moment. And this proper perspective is that my life is the very life of God and it's flowing in me, through me, around me, and always for me. I love that phrase. We use it quite often here at City of Light, constantly reminding people that the presence of God is in you. It is flowing through you. It is around you. And I love this. The most of all, it's there for you. So when we understand this, we're now shifting our perspective to begin to see things with right seeing. Not a journey where we are constantly looking at ways to condemn others and to tell them where they're wrong, but to work within our own individual life and to go within and to see then uh, changing the perspective of our life, of how we live and how we interact in this world. We change it completely when we understand that my life is God's life. That's right, the very life of God is what I'm living. Wow, now that perspective changes everything and we begin to see the world from a different perspective, totally. The greatest problem we have in today's world of education is, and especially in spiritual education, is that we are so busy trying to tell people what to think versus how to think. We don't really often teach in schools and in education and in our churches, helping people how to think. Because we're often just saying, well, just tell me what to think, Pastor. Just tell me what I should think. And just, I'll think that. I'll just embrace those kind of things. And yet, we haven't really expressed time and given time into expressing, how do we think? What's the proper way to think? So, it's not so much what we think, but how we think. And it's really then, it's thinking from this true perspective. My life is God's life. And in, if I am living the very life of God, I am the revelation of God. I'm the expression of God. If I'm really embracing that, wow, my perspective really changes. And I begin to see the world differently. And I begin to see with eyes of love and compassion. 
understanding, forgiveness, grace. I begin to see the world in ways where I am patient with one another and full of gentleness and a great sense of love for one another, a sense of unity and harmony with one another, realizing that I'm not here to tell you where you're wrong. I'm here to live out my journey, my pathway, as well as you're on your journey and your pathway. And as we each embrace the right seeing, the right perspectives of one another, suddenly we begin to move and dwell in a realm of great harmony. We think changing our thoughts somehow will make something, uh, make us something, but we're, I want you to know that we are already are something. This is a different way of seeing things in life because quite often we are constantly saying, I hope one day to be creative, but you are creative. Oh, I hope one day to be uh, you know, gifted or talented, but you are gifted and talented. See, again, we're now looking at right seeing, is seeing the fact that we've been created divinely. We've been created with the divine image of God and all of its infinite possibilities and its infinite mind is available to us. You may say, one day I hope to be intelligent. One day I hope to be smart. Oh, but you are. When we understand this, it's that we begin to think of from the perspective I am versus I hope to be or someday I will be, but I am. I am that now. That's right seeing. I begin to see my life that right now you are successful. Right now you are whole. Right now you are blessed. Right now you are successful. Right now you are prosperous. All these things and we begin to change our perspective. Not someday or hope to, but I'm living it in this now. There is one life. That life is God's life. And that life is my life now, right now. And when we have this perspective, I'm living the God life. I'm living the divine expression. I am living as this wonderful revelation of the goodness of God. Well, all things began to unfold in that proper alignment with that. Scripture says, as a man thinks, so he is. And his or her thinking creates a world. But we have to acknowledge that we are more than our thoughts. We have to acknowledge who we are. Because a lot of times we are just caught up with, we are our thoughts. But oh no, you're beyond those thoughts. You are so much more that. You are this divine creation. You are all that is of the source. All that the Father has is mine, Scripture says. And that's our thinking. But that's who we are, blessed with infinite possibilities. That divine mind that created me, well, I'm part of it. And that infinite wisdom of God then is mine. And I claim it. And I live from that place. And I am, not I will be. You see, that's a different perspective. When we are now claiming I am, we are now seeing ourselves in the light that we're called to live in. Things happen, and quite often in our world, we just react to them. And we are a reactionary race of people. And we assume that the thoughts that we think are produced by the circumstances we experience. And when we do this, well, then what happens is life becomes a continuous reaction to the outside. And here's again, let's do a little check. If we're so reactionary, sometimes we get caught up and we watch the news and suddenly we're reacting to it. When we've lost our perspective, wait, 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 wait. I'm worried, I'm scared, I'm frightened, I'm terrified. Oh, did we not say, I am the divine expression. I am God. I am the revelation of the divine. There is one life and that life is God's life and I'm living that life now. Then why are we being reactionary? Why are we being caught up in fear? Why are we caught up in worry? Why are we caught up in all of this? The Bible teaches us that we have control over our thoughts. There are so many passages, but one of my favorites is, choose ye this day whom you will serve. You have to make a choice in your life. Who will you serve? Are you going to serve fear and worry? and Or are you going to make the choice within your life to serve that which is of joy and peace? Are you going to serve from the I hope to be? Or are you going to serve from the I am perspective? You see, this is helping us with right seeing. There is a passage of scripture that says, no man can serve two masters. 
we're pulled in different directions when we're saying, I'm serving my reactionary mode of fear, and I'm trying to serve my sense of calm and peace, uh, that God is working all things together for my good, and I'm being pulled, reactionary peace, reactionary fear and worry and stress, peace, I'm trying to hold on to that, and we're being pulled back and forth. This past week in particular, as my partner of 20 years is facing these final weeks in the journey of this life, He's going through the final moments, preparing for this wonderful transition as he leaves this physical realm and passes into eternity, into an ethereal realm, and to a life of uh, that which we have anticipated and hoped for, uh, the life of joy and peace and wonderful contentment. Yet, if there's times I feel like you're torn and you are saying, I don't want him to go, I want him to stay. The other is, I need, he, he needs to go because he's in so much pain. We need to release him and allow him to move into the next realm. And so you become torn in this terrible place where you're pulled in different directions and it becomes a torture for your life when you're saying, don't go, but go, don't go, but go. And you're just emotionally a mess and you have to say, wait a minute, I can't serve two masters. I have to make the choice today, whom will I serve? What will be my guiding thoughts for the day? Will the thoughts be of that which is I hope or I wish or I want or I am? Will I see this scenario from right seeing, a perspective that all things are working in divine order and the transition from this realm for his life is the course for his journey. And I celebrate with great joy what is coming for him as we look for that and let go of serving two masters and celebrate now with a focus on the great joy he will be experiencing within his life. Sometimes we focus on the thought that experiences in our life uh, cause our thoughts, but it's your reaction that does it. Someone does something to you and you don't want to be upset. Well, you don't have to be upset because you can choose how you will react. When life does something, gives you some sort of challenge, you can choose how you react. Isn't that wonderful? We have the power of choice, but we think sometimes all of our experiences then are shaping our thoughts. It's actually our reactions, what we've chosen, that are shaping our life and our thoughts. Your thoughts are then your reactions to everything that you're going through. So the reason we have problems is because we're reacting to others' problems. Quite often we're just reacting in, in fear and stress and worry to something that's happened and it's quite often it's others' problems. When someone comes at you and they've got a problem that they're working through in their life and they say something hurtful to you and remember, it's all about them, not really about you, but you've now welcomed their issues and what's going on in their life. And because you've accepted and reacted to it, suddenly now you're upset. And what happens is we've allowed our mental mastery to go by the wayside. We've just let go of the fact that we have the power to choose, to shape, to create our day every day by saying, wait a minute, I refuse to be reactionary. I refuse to react to this. I refuse to be in the sense of caught up and manipulated by what's going on with the problems of the world. It's your mind and you have the power to choose. Now you may say, oh, well, this is very upsetting. I'm really troubled by this. And why does this person do this? And what would happen is, again, we're just allowing these phrases to stimulate some sort of reaction that creates more problems within our own life. So no matter what's happening to you, just remember, it's a choice. It's a choice. This is the guidance, the self-help that the scriptures, the ancient truths of the Bible have been trying to teach us and get across to us. Yet we're so caught up in our religiosity that we overlook some of the beautiful practical applications of scripture, inviting us to understand that we have the power to shape and mold an amazing life while we're here on earth. You don't have to be unhappy. You don't have to be angry. You don't have to be fearful. You can choose to think be positive and you can be the master versus the slave of the journey of your life. Quite often people think, well, when life sends me a challenge, I think I should be challenged. 
I think I should live out that challenge. I should be, oh my God, I'm so challenged. Oh my God, the problems are here. Because life gave this to me and I welcome it and I want to live. Oh, wait a minute. We're living in a victimhood status at that moment. When we keep thinking life gave you a challenge, well, how are you going to react? Well, you're reacting from the I am living my highest and best in this moment right now. Am I living from that perspective and seeing everything from that view? If you are, then when life offers you a challenge, it now becomes an opportunity. It shifts and it changes within our life. And what happens is that we have this wonderful We discover ourselves as a thinking center of the divine mind. That's right. A thinking center of the divine mind. God. That infinite wisdom each and every one of us. And we know that as we are a creation of the divine, that everything that is within the divine is within us. And so we must think of ourselves as this, that we're never, never apart from the infinite wisdom of God. We're never apart or removed from that divine mind. You can never get into the divine mind. There's people say, oh, let me try to work and struggle to get into this divine mind, into this infinite wisdom and this understanding. Let me try to get there. Let me work at it because there's no way you can get out of it. You can't get in it because there's no way you can get out of it. You always are. You are. It is right now. It is there. And this is the right seeing. When we begin to look at the world from this perspective, there is this one basic intelligence, but quite often we distort it because we're welcoming and entertaining negativity, negative thoughts, the worst case scenario. We kind of leave the door open and we allow fear to triple in. We allow worry and stress to come on in. And we begin to distort this infinite wisdom and intelligence. It says, I know, I know the pathway. I know the right choices. I know how to live this, but I've been welcoming this distorted view, this negative uh, things happening within our life, in our journey. A lot of people say, well, you know, it's just bad luck, but bad luck is the result of some bad mental patterns where you have simply allowed negativity to come into your life. It's telling you that you need to change the way you deal with things. That's all that bad luck is doing. Because let's just see this beautiful example that when you are sailing out on the seas on a beautiful sailing yacht, the direction of that yacht is determined by the direction that the crew sets the sails. That yacht can go sailing east. It can also go sailing west. The choice is, how did you set the sails? And in life, that's so true for each and every one of us. The direction you're headed and where you're going depends upon how you have set your sails. Are you setting your sails in the way that you are aligned to move through the waves of chaos in this world with great peace and moving in the right perfect direction of your life? Because your thoughts are the problem in your life, not people. We often see people as the problems, but it's our thoughts about people that are the problems. It's our lack and inability of right seeing and seeing each and every scenario. Because you are not what you think. You are thinking what you think. You are more than your thoughts that you are thinking. But if you keep thinking, you are less than, well, than you are. Now that kind of plays out within our lives. But you are more than the thought that you have within your life. You are this divine creation. You are this I am. And so when you think about what you're thinking, just let it be. I welcome. This is the one life. And that one life is God's life. And that life is my life. And I'm living it right now in this moment. Amen. You know, this positive thought that we talk about is really tuning yourself into the divine source within you. A lot of people think, oh, positive thinking is, I need a bunch of affirmations. I'm gonna write them all over it. That's good. I need a bunch of great positive phrases and I'm just gonna repeat them over and over again. But it's more than just that. It's coming to the acknowledgement of who and what you are right now in this moment. 
You are this divine expression. So we want to wake up the consciousness to the fact that you are a spiritual being, not someone trying to be a spiritual being, but you already are a spiritual being. You already are that. You know, oh, 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 but I hope to one day be of the saint, one day be somewhat fully awake. You are. So start living from the perspective of what you are. And what happens is there's this wonderful transition in your life. I love that phrase from the movie with Mommy Dearest, I believe it's called, uh, that says, but you are, Blanche, you are, you know? And I think we need to say that to ourselves. Hey, but you are, Blanche, you are. You are already this. And when you own that and accept that and receive that, suddenly this becomes your revelation of the true reality within your life. You are not your thoughts. You are more than your thoughts. You are divine creation. You're the revelation of God expressing. So begin to change your awareness, shift your seeing to right seeing. Now you don't become creative just because you say you're creative. And you don't become all these kind of things. What happens is it's knowing that you already are creative. You know, it's knowing that creativity is there. And what happens is it rises up and it releases from within you. Know that perfect health and wholeness is already there, but allow it to rise up, begin to acknowledge it and recognize it. Realize your success is already there. Begin to let it rise up and acknowledge it within your life. It's not about filling up your mind, it's about waking up your mind. If we could grasp this, this is what it's all about. It's not about filling up your mind with a lot of positive cliches, that can be helpful, but it's about waking up your mind to the very basic truth you are. You are. You already are. And to live from that perspective. Robert Fry offers us this wonderful suggestion for day-to-day -day living. When asked, how can you be so positive? He says, well, these are the things I do as I begin my day. Number one, the first thing I do, I do two things. The first thing I do is I get out of bed and I make my bed. And the second thing I do is I get out of bed and I make my, my mind. Two very essential things. He says, one, the power of making your bed is a physical act you may do. But the second one, making up your mind, is the spiritual work that's essential for beginning your day. I'm making up my mind. I'm making up my mind right here and now that I am, not will be, not not I hope to be, but I am right now. And when we live from that perspective, everything changes. You're looking for a job. Oh, I hope one day I'll get a job. No, I am. And I'm with this expectancy that says I am and I'm living from that perspective. So then I am acting and open and receptive to those things being drawn to me in a greater way. When you're saying I am hoping that one day I find a loving relationship. No, I am. I am and I already believe that. Not I hope to, but I already am. And you say, well, where is that loving? It's coming to me because I'm already from that perspective is how I see and create my life each and every day. I've made up my mind. Two great things. Now, you may say, I'm not into making your bed. We'll do something else that's a physical act. But along with that, make sure you make up your mind. That's what's so important for our lives. So we want to awaken to this awareness that you always were, always are. Wake up to the, the fact that this is true and allow this to shape your, your very being and your very day. Let's remember this. I am not what I think. I am a divine creation that has the power to express the positive. I am not what I think because quite often our thoughts are like, I'm nothing. I'm not capable. I'm not very good. I don't know how I can do this. Oh, wait a minute. Let's shift, let's make up our mind. I am a divine creation and I have the power. The power is within me to express the positive. I don't have problems. The world has problems. And I have the capacity to deal with them in a positive way because I am in control of my mind. Wow, isn't that liberating right there and there, you know? It helps people who say, I like to watch the news, but oh, I get so caught up in it. I get, I just, you've surrendered your mind to the news and allow it to lead you astray. And there you go. But wait a minute, you have control of your mind and you have control of how you will react. And when you listen to the news and say, that's what's going on in the world. I am in the world, but I'm not of the world. Okay. That's what's going in the world. That's the world's problems, but not my problems. 
because my problems, my life is the life of God and that God is infinite possibilities within me and it's unfolding for me right now. So I am not worried or stressed or uh, troubled by what's going on because that's the world's problems regardless of those negative thoughts that come your way and you can separate yourself from them. You know, scripture says, get thee behind me, Satan. Okay, Satan being those adversarial, adversarial negative thoughts. What do you say? Get behind me because I'm pressing forward and what's behind me I can't see and I don't care about because I'm leaving it behind. And it's time for us then to say, you know what? I'm going to choose with right seeing that when negative thoughts come my way, I just simply say, negative thought, get behind me, get behind me. I'm moving on. I I'm leaving you in the dust. You're gone. Until we begin to think then from the I am, this right seeing. Well, we will always use then affirmations as sort of I, I wish, like I'm trying to do something. So I'm gonna say these affirmations. I will be good, I will be successful, I will be positive. Because we're speaking them from a thought that says, I'm not, but let's shift to I am. And suddenly everything we say and think and do takes on a new perspective. The hope of someday is gone because you're living in the now. There is one life. That life is God's life. That life is my life right now. That's right seeing. Amen. Amen. We are, we've got our vision corrected here.